backgrounds, there's a few things that we need to remember. We need to focus on the direction and intensity of light, trying to match that as much as we can. We have to look at the depth of field, the focal length and the camera angle. There is so much that goes into obviously creating a digital, but when you're capturing your baby, you've also got to consider how you can use that image to create even more creative results, I suppose, uh, for your clients to give them lots of variety. So I've got a digital background backdrop open here and I've got a baby. I'm just gonna show you really quickly how I would use a baby like this that has just been shot on my posing bag and how I would obviously apply them to a digital background. So I'm going to just circle and select the baby there. Command C to copy and Command V to paste. So here's our baby, obviously a lot bigger than our background. So what I'm gonna do is come over to the opacity slider of my layer and just reduce that so I can see that underneath and then I'm going to hit Command T to take it into transform and this will allow me to resize my baby to fit them inside. Now I can rotate the baby if I want um, but one thing that we've noticed, well I've noticed, I hope you noticed as well, is that the direction of light is different to our backdrop. So that's something that's obviously going to, you know, really kind of give you a red flag there in terms of how legit this really is. So what I'm going to do now is take it back into transform. I've got the right size and I'm going to right click and flip my baby horizontally. So here we are. We can now move our baby and get them nice and centered. I'm just looking over here at the bottom and then where that little head is. I could make them a little smaller if I wanted to but I'm quite happy there. All right, so bringing the opacity up, what I need to do, make sure that's on 100, um, as you don't wanna zoom in later on when you finished your work and see that your opacity wasn't right, you need to add a layer mask first. So this is where I'm going to grab a brush and I'm gonna bring that opacity of the brush up to 100% as I go around the outside here and make sure it's a black brush as I remove that layer from the image. All right. So now if I turn that layer off and have a look at where that fur is underneath, this might mean I need to resize my baby even more, so I've clicked back onto my layer. And we'll just bring them down a bit more into that fur because that's that texture that we need around the baby. There we go. Okay, so you can also see that the baby's really quite bright compared to our background as well. I don't tend to darken my babies. Um, what I do do is add more contrast and brightness to my backdrop, which I'll show you in a moment. So when I'm doing this, clicking back on my layer mask, now what I want to do is come in a little closer around the baby here. And I've got a nice soft brush so that it is feathering that edge. And we've got our wrap here as well. percent and you can flick back and forth between your brushes so you'll notice there's no shadow now underneath the baby and that's what we're going to work on next and we'll continue to follow the path of light and the direction as it falls across the baby when we work with these shadows all right so what we've got now, we can come back and work on the baby a bit more in a second, but what we've got now is um, a floating baby. So I'm going to create a adjustment layer, a curves adjustment layer underneath the baby. So I'm gonna click back onto my background layer, come down here into curves, and this is where I'm just going to bring down that information. I'm gonna really darken it. There we go. 
Now I am going to invert that layer mask, Command I, and this is where I can bring the opacity of my brush down, and then I can just paint around the outside of the baby to create my shadow. So now we've got a shadow layer. We've got before and after. The baby's starting to look like it might actually belong here. <laughs> All right, so I can actually see that I do need to darken down some of those lighter areas there. What I am going to do though, is just create another um, adjustment curves layer. And then we'll bring that information down even more. Make it really nice and dark. highlights invert that and then we can paint that on as well so yeah as we start to kind of go around and we add that extra bit of depth there we can start to see you know coming together all right now I'm going to go back to my baby now and that mask and this is where I will come in with my brush, my black brush, and I will start to kind of remove the edge there. And now what I want to do is apply that layer mask so right click, apply layer mask. Now what I'm gonna do is create a copy layer. Whenever I'm working on the baby, I always create a copy layer. This is how I, you know, can sort of control the, what I do and what I don't do. So I can, rem I can delete the layer underneath if I want to, but um, at the end of the day, I just wanna have that back up in case I go too far and I can't come back. So now what I wanna do is Go into Curves, Command M. And this is where I'm just going to bring down those mid-tones of my baby here. There we go. I'm going to add a layer mask, invert that. And now I'm going to paint that on at a lower opacity, about sort of 35, 40. And I'm just going to come around the edge of my baby. And we'll zoom in a bit. to darken down the edges here. It's gonna help give the baby just that little bit extra depth. Make it look a little bit more natural as to the shadows falling across the the top of that bowl. All right, so before, after. So that does help as well. And this is where you can just continually keep sort of coming in and adding, you know, the, the depth that you need to make it look exactly how you want it. Okay, so once you've sort of done that, um, if you start to get a bit of a heavy line around that area that you're painting, you can see it there, this is when you can go just like turn it on and off we can go up to make sure that your mask is selected up to filter blur down to Gaussian blur now that's going to blur it at 435 pixels we don't want that so what I'm going to do is bring it back down to really low and then just gradually increase it to where I start to sort of see it spread a bit more and blend and stop being such a, a hard line 
and you can do it with the other one as well if you want to give that a bit more softness totally up to you don't go too far though all right so now that we've got to a point and we've pretty much got our baby sort of in there cemented in here we can start working on how we can adjust the colors and things like that to really kind of finish this off and get it all looking just right. That's a tone that's quite similar to those skin tones. I'm just going to bring the opacity of that layer back, even to about 50%. You can see the difference that it makes there. Now you can continue to explore and play, but these tools just have endless possibilities and they're going to give you so much more creative freedom when it comes to creating beautiful art for your clients. I can't wait to see what you create.